Mondo, the magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The makers of White King Granulated Soap and Sierra Pine Toilet Soap present for your enjoyment, Chandu, the magician. Waters of the Nile. That's the name of Chandu's thrilling new magic trick. The gravity-defying trick you can get for just 10 cents and a White King Soap box top or three Sierra Pine Toilet Soap wrappers. Next time you go to a party... Tell everyone that you have learned to overcome the law of gravity. Then, while they watch, fill an ordinary pop bottle full of water. Show everyone that the water pours out in the usual way. Fill the bottle up again. Slowly turn the bottle upside down. And to everyone's amazement, the water remains suspended in defiance of gravity. You can even insert a match, a toothpick, or a pencil, and not a drop of water will spill out. Once you've mastered this water trick. And all it costs you is a dime, just ten cents in coin, and a White King soap box top, or three Sierra Pine toilet soap wrappers, mailed to Chandu, Los Angeles 21. You'll receive this water trick promptly postpaid. That's Chandu, Los Angeles 21. On the far eastern island of Sumatra, the regents are preparing to sail for their home in California when Frank Chandler, known in the east as Chandu the Magician, receives a warning from his teacher, the yogi, not to allow the family to go without him. Later, in the hotel lounge, a native storyteller relates a tale of pagan jungle vengeance, which seems to Chandler to be directed to him alone. The storyteller disappears, and before Chandler can go in search of him, a messenger arrives with a letter, an urgent request that Chandler come at once to Siam. The letter is from Dr. Ian Shaw, a longtime agent of the International Inner Council, of which Chandler himself is a member. Now, three days later, the party has just arrived at a large native bungalow set high on pilings, in a Siamese village. Chandu, the magician. Gee, this is like climbing the Eiffel Tower. No fooling. Just put the bags down there, Wong, and bring us something cool to drink. Not to outside. Do you live here all by yourself, Dr. Shaw? Uh, yes, yes, I do, Bob. Uh, Mrs. Regent, will you sit here? I'll have Wong show you to your rooms as soon as we've had a cold drink. Thank you. I suppose the natives built this house for you. Did you say you were the only guest here, Dr. Shaw? Yes. It isn't much of a place, but then I am the only white man for miles. Well, let's not just sit here, Bob. Let's go outside again and look around. You won't be so energetic when you've been here for a time. This heat is enough to make even you youngsters lazy. <laughs> well, we aren't going to be here very long. We might as well look around while we are. Is it all right to go out, Mother? Oh, I'm not waiting till Wong brings us something cool to drink. Oh, it's stifling today. Oh, it sure is. Dr. Shaw, are you a regular doctor or a scientist like my father? I'm a physician, Bob. I've been doing research work here for several years. Ah, here is Wong with the drinks. Mim Oh, thank you. Mmm, isn't this good? Yes. It's made from the juice of the native fruit. Oh. Well, it's very pleasant to have other guests here. Mm. Though I was surprised, Mr. Chanda. That I brought the family? I wouldn't have, except for a warning I received in Sumatra. My brother-in-law is joining us in a day or so, too, as I told you. Do you mean you were told your family wouldn't be safe in Sumatra? Well, not exactly. But you've heard the news from Indonesia. Dad was so bushed when we got to Bangkok that Uncle Frank and Mom talked him into staying there for a couple of days and having a doctor look him over. But, my dear Mr. Chandler, I could have done that. Well, I understood you'd retired from practice, well, That's Dr. quite Shaw. true, but in a case like this, I'd make an exception, of course. Well, that's very kind of you. I'm sorry we didn't know. 
We'd have stayed in Bangkok with him, except that Frank was so insistent. Dr. Shaw's letter was insistent. I hope I haven't brought you here on a fool's errand. Dr. Shaw, if you and Uncle Frank are going to talk, can't we go out and look around the village? Uh, just a minute, Betty. Dr. Shaw, what about the temple across the clearing? Is it in use? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. The stone building? Well, they sure took a lot of trouble with it, didn't they? Everything else in the village is built of wood, on stilts at that. These natives expend all their energies on their temples. Pagan rites, you know. Uncle Frank, how funny you look. He knows the kind of thing I mean, Betty. I've seen more than one man go back to England, a pitiable, haunted ruin of himself. Good heavens, what a place to spend your life. Yes, I quite agree. Beastly native ceremonials, superstitions. There's something about the jungle that is terrifying. Even the rain is unnatural here. Uh, Dr. Shaw, suppose Added to we... all this, you can go out on any of the jungle trails and find that what seems to be an overhanging branch is a python oh. looking at you with cold, unblinking eyes. For Pete's sake. You sound like you'd been here too long yourself. Bob. Oh, I don't mind, Mrs. Regent. I must seem as if I'd had a touch of the sun. But it's, it's so strange to be talking with people like you again. Have you finished what you came here to do? Yes, yes. That is the reason that I wrote to you. I want to get away from here. I must get away. Back to England where things are... are sane. Uh, let's go and have a look at your report, shall we? Oh, uh, yes, quite. Dr. Shaw, is it all right for us to go out or not? Uh, certainly, but... I must question you not to seem curious about the natives at first. Oh? They'll become accustomed to you in a few days. You'll find them perfectly friendly. Okay. Just don't pay any attention to them. Well, they'd better not go out at all. Oh, I'm sorry I frightened you, Mrs. Regent. It's really quite safe. Except, of course, the temple. No outsiders are permitted to watch any of the ceremonies. They worship... The cobra. Huh? Uncle Frank, it's just I like... know. Don't go near the place. Come with us, Mother. You don't want to just sit here. Oh, I'd rather sit here than go out in this heat. But you remember, children, don't go near any of the people or speak to them, though. No, the natives won't speak to you no matter how long you've been here. They just say, nom les vous, and that ends it. Nom les vous? That sounds French. I do not know the derivation. It is their stock remark to foreigners. What does it mean? Oh, I don't understand, or I don't know. Uh, out this way, Mr. Chandler. My workshop is completely secluded, though it isn't far away. Oh, he gives me the shivers. I wonder why he doesn't work right here in the house. Oh, I hope we won't have to stay here long. That voice of his. He sounds like a zombie. Oh. Well, come on, Bets. Let's see what's with this charming little winter resort. <laughs> the travel folders overlooked something, didn't they? Don't go far, will you? We won't, Mom. Oh, this house makes me dizzy. Like being up in a Ferris wheel. Yeah, or on a roller coaster. Oh, this would be a grim place to have to live. Yeah, especially if you spent your life falling on your face before a cobra. I should think Dr. Shaw could have told them better by this time. He said he'd been here for years. He hasn't even bothered to learn their language. He's kind of like Daddy in that way. Buried up to his eyebrows in what he's doing. He wouldn't even know the natives were here. Don't compare Dad with Dr. Shaw. Oh, I don't mean Daddy's spooky like that, Bob. And you'd be kind of offbeat, too, if you'd been stuck here as long as Dr. Shaw has. I guess I would at that. Which way should we go? Well... Oh, there's a little path over there. Oh, Bob, look. Huh? Behind that big what? bush. They're peeking out at us. Don't look at them. Come on. I am. I wonder if it's all right to pick those flowers. Oh, they're gorgeous. We could take them into Mother. Why not? They're wild, that's for sure. Then that branch down for me, Bob. Oh, wait. Let's get them on the way back. Back from where? We're going for a walk, aren't we? There's no use lugging a lot of flowers. No. Well, let's just see where the path goes. <laughs> Maybe it leads to a water hole where tigers come to drink. And me without my shotgun. <laughs> you 
You will see your room now, Mem Saib. What? Oh, no, thank you. I'm not going to my room now. You will see your room now. No, I said. I don't care to see it now. Come back in half an hour. It is better you go now, Mem Saib. Why? Later, I am busy. I thought Dr. Shaw said none of your people spoke English. Namlevo. Uh, I shouldn't have mentioned it. Why, what is that you're holding behind you? Silk. You like it? Where did you get it? You wish to buy it, Mam Saib? Well, it's my daughter's scarf. She was wearing it when she went out a few minutes ago. I'll take it, please. Mrs. Saib does not know. Well, I'll give it to her. Thank you. And um, here's something for you. We do not like your money. We? My people know that a lost thing carries the spirit of the one... Give me who... that scarf. Mrs. Saib is in the temple now. The temple? Why, she can't be. Well, I know she wouldn't go into that temple. Oh, where could they be? Mrs. Saib is in the temple. Did you see my son? He was with her. Nam le Mem Saib. Betty! Bob! The stone walls of the temple. Listen. The drum. Where is Dr. Shaw's workshop? Nam le oh, You must know. Go and call him and get my brother. Nam le I know you understand me. Is that drum in the temple? You hear it, Mem Saib? Oh, there's no time to look for Frank. I'll have to... Where do you go, Mem Saib? To bring my daughter back, of course. And I want you to go and get Mr. Chandler and Dr. Shaw at once. I will take you where Mrs. Saib went. You go and bring Mr. Chandler. I can see the door of the temple. Oh, what is it? Go and call Mr. Chandler, I tell you. Betty! Betty, darling! Betty! <laughs> So dark. Ten cents in coin brings you Chandu's mystifying water trick. Just mail ten cents and the White King granulated soap box top or three Sierra Pine toilet soap wrappers to Chandu, Los Angeles 21. Chandu will send you this great bargain in magic, the thrilling trick he calls the waters of the Nile. Fill an empty pot bottle full of water. Turn it upside down. A stream of water pours out, of course. But when you have mastered Chandu's mysterious water trick, you can hold the bottle upside down and no water will run out. You can even insert matches or toothpicks through the open mouth. And in apparent defiance of the laws of gravity... The water remains suspended in the bottle. Here is a thrilling trick that will puzzle and entertain everyone, young and old. And you can have it for just ten cents. Just a dime and a White King soap box top or three Sierra Pine toilet soap wrappers. Mail with your name and address to Chandu, Los Angeles 21. You will receive Chandu's Waters of the Nile magic trick postpaid. Chandu the Magician is presented for your enjoyment every weekday evening. Dorothy Regent is played by Irene Tedrow. Your announcer is Howard Culver. The makers of White King invite you to listen tomorrow at this time when the story resumes. Chandu the Magician. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>